Hey, now Deadheads, we're back. Been doing a lot of these lately. Back again so soon. Uh, this time, probably one of the biggest disappointments that I've had to share on this channel. Um, as you know, if you've been following my videos, I've, I've got a few of them so far. Um, I'm usually very enthusiastic about all the releases in the, the Grateful Dead extended universe, whether it's Dick's picks, Dave's picks, box sets, uh, side projects, um, you know, from Jerry, Bobby, Mickey, any of them uh, have their, they all have their side projects getting all sorts of releases and re-releases. But this is probably the most disappointing one that I've had to share with you guys so far. Uh, but before I share what it is, I want to share something else. You guys remember CDs, you remember Dick's Picks. Now on the back of these Dick's Picks CDs, I'll zoom in on it, they had the Caveat Emptor. Uh, on this one, on this particular Dick's Picks, Volume 11, the Caveat Emptor, um, if you don't read Latin, that means, hey buddy, watch out, uh, says, this release was digitally mastered directly from the original half-track 7.5 IPS analog tapes. It's a snapshot of history, not a modern professional recording, and may therefore exhibit some minor technical anomalies and the unavoidable effects of the ravages of time. Now, something that we have never really gotten on a Dave's Picks release, or at least as far as I know, is a caveat emptor. So we got those warnings during the Dick's Picks era, but as far as I recall, I don't remember seeing those in any of the Dave's Picks releases. We got those warnings in those seaside chats that he releases on YouTube for most of the Dave's Picks releases, but we haven't gotten them on the packaging itself, on the ba back of the box. Um, you'll notice this on a very recent release. Here we have no caveat emptor in the bottom right corner, but probably need it for this one. And this is, of course, the release that came in the mail this week, which is Dave's Picks 23. Um, I was really excited about this. Um, when they released the Grateful Dead Almanac via email at the end of last year, they mentioned uh, not one but two Dave's Picks releases coming to us in vinyl box sets this year. Uh, the first surprise release was volume 23. So they're not going in order. Last year we got volume one. This year we've got 23 and still a mystery Dave's Picks release to come. Um, and so pre-orders I think went up on live in January, came this week. Uh, was really excited to, to get this one. I was really pleased when I saw it came in the mail in a pretty typical vinyl box set mailer and not a large box with some loose styrofoam like Dave's Picks number one came in. Uh, a lot of people were complaining about the packaging for Dave's Picks one, and so I think they've remedied a lot of that with Dave's Picks 23. Unfortunately, this better packaging didn't really save the day. Um, and you'll see what I mean by that in a little bit. But let's open this up. Let's let's see what's inside the box first before we get into the review and criticism. Um, when we open things up, beautiful, beautiful front cover here. Um, of course, spaceship beaming up the hippies uh, for the, the Close Encounters jam. Uh, when we open things up, you see the liner notes, and this is a, a fairly faithful recreation of the original liner notes that came with the CD of Dave's Picks 23. And you can see a familiar name as the author of these liner notes. That, of course, is Jesse Jarno. If you're like me, you're a fan of the good old Grateful Dead cast. I've been really keeping track of it, say, on the top of it. This past season is shaping up to be a great one, so I would recommend following that if you don't already. Uh, but that is hosted by Jesse Jarno, a writer and journalist and regular in the Grateful Dead universe. When we look at the records, the labels look fairly standard for the Dave's Picks series. They might look familiar if you saw my unboxing video for Dave's Picks Volume 1. Uh, but something that is less familiar to me is this big scuff on side 6 of the record, really interrupting the Terrapin Station and Drums side of this 10-side 5-record set. So real bummer there. Um, I really enjoy this Terrapin Station, but there's definitely audible pops and clicks throughout not just this sixth side, but through most of the of the ten sides. As you can see here, there's a lot of kind of paper waste, and there was a bunch of you know, loose chips of vinyl uh, inside each of these inner sleeves that I had to empty out, blow out with some compressed air when it first came in. When I first put this record on my record player, the mess was really quite audible, so I gave it a spin through the spin clean 
You know, I'm usually not the type of guy who has to clean records before they before they hit the turntable. I know some people are religious about that. They put it in the ultrasonic or even the spin clean before giving it you know, a listen. I usually go straight to the record player. But in this case, it really needed the spin clean. And even then, I think the, the damage has been done. Those those chips of vinyl, the waste from, from the, the little pieces of paper fluff that got pressed into the grooves, still audible after a spin in the spin clean record cleaner. So I had, to, I had to reach out to Grateful Dead Productions. I think Warner handles their e-commerce side. Sent that email saying, hey man, this is messed up. This is not a great copy of this record and you gotta do something about this. I think usually they'll send out replacement records. Um, if there's just one side that's bad, they'll probably just send out that one side. But I think almost all of the sides here you know, didn't really arrive the way that they should have. They, uh, the, the quality control, the shipping, it just, it wasn't there on this one. And this was you know, squarely in the middle. This is number uh, 2516 out of 5,000. And so this was not, you know, the first or the last pressing. This was right in the middle and uh, really, really bummed about the quality control on this one. Additionally, I mentioned the caveat emptor, and it's not just the quality control and the shipping uh, process that this went through, but this, especially the first set, this show has a few glitches here and there. There's some vocal dropouts, there's some mixing that gets you know adjusted along the way, especially during the first few songs. And most notably, Jerry's just not sounding that good. Um, this is, I think, famously came off a run where they, they canceled a bunch of shows. That mid to late January 1978 run, uh, Jerry was sick for, for most of that month. And you can tell that he's still getting better, especially at the beginning of, of this uh, set one. He's got a bit of a frog in his throat, and that gets worked out a little bit as we progress. I think, it, I think he starts to sound better after those first few songs, but he has sounded pretty rough at the beginning. Poor Jerry was sick, and they still made him go out on stage. And so uh, a little bit of a reminder that Jerry is human too. He gets sick just like the rest of us, catches a cold. Um, but unfortunate that... He just didn't sound so great when the rest of the band, and well, he, he was playing great, he just wasn't singing so great uh, during that first set of this January 1978 show. That being said, there's a few standout songs on here. You know, I've been trying to call out the standouts a little bit more lately. Um, I was actually really taken by the Dire Wolf on this, uh, despite how Jerry sounded. Um, it was just a unique Dire Wolf, I think. Uh, the music never stopped on this one. You, uh, if you've been watching my videos lately, you know, kind of fallen for the music never stopped. And this one is uh, no slouch, it's a good one. The Terrapin Station on this is good. Uh, and then the other one, side seven and eight. The other one, Into Space, Into St. Stephen. Now, it's kind of cliche to say, but the space on this is really good. It's that um, Close Encounters uh, space that this show is famous for and that ended up on, on the front cover. Uh, he plays that famous little melody from Close Encounters, Jerry does during this space. I think it's kind of hard to hear. Uh, maybe I'm just not that dialed into Close Encounters, but I had to listen to it a few times where I was like, yeah, that's the Close Encounters. So it's a little gimmicky. People are kind of pushing the lore, I think, a little bit in this release. But the space is great, and the way it the way it segues into St. Stephen, you know, I, I, I'm, not, I'm not writing off space just because I'm not into the hype of the Close Encounters. Um, I think the space into St. Stephen really is killer. And a killer St. Stephen on this recording. Uh, really, really great sounding. And then right at the end, side 10, around and around into U.S. Blues. I'm not the biggest U.S. Blues fan. I'm not you know, the, the hater who will call it useless blues. I've heard that a few times. That's kind of mean. Yeah, I'm, I'm just kind of neutral on U.S. Blues, but the around and around really liked it, really enjoyed it. I'm glad that that's the, uh, how they chose to, to close off that second set. Really good stuff. Mixed bag here, as, as you can tell from my review. I'm enthusiastic about some parts. Other parts I'm disappointed and, uh, and a little bit frustrated about uh, the, the package and how it all arrived at my front door. But ultimately, I'm you know, confident that Warner is going to make things right. Um, we'll get the replacement records and this will be in heavy rotation for years to come. So excited about this one, excited to 
hear a cleaner, a couple cleaner records in, in this one. Uh, but we'll get that soon enough, I'm sure. Uh, another thing that came in the mail this week, speaking of Dave's Picks, we got Dave's Picks 46. Finally got focus on that. Uh, really great show uh, from September 72. Got a, not the highest, not the lowest number on that one as well. And then, of course, the bonus disc for Dave's Picks 2023. A little bit more late 1972. So we've got Jersey City and we've got Boulder, Colorado. Again, I think the bonus disc needs the caveat emptor the most here. Um, that those, those Jersey City uh, songs, I didn't think the recording was that great. Cool to have, nice to have in the collection, those odds and ends, those shows that you know we're not gonna get the full release of because of bigger technical problems here and there. Uh, but kind of surprised but by the amount of technical problems on those uh, Jersey City songs on the first half of the bonus disc. Now we've got a few other things coming soon. We've got uh, History of the Grateful Dead Volume 1 Bear's Choice, which I believe was supposed to ship a couple days ago. I haven't gotten a shipping notification, but surely it'll show up on my doorstep within the next week, and I'll be sharing that on this channel. I've got the Dead.net exclusive colored vinyl pressing, so excited to open that up, give it a listen, and then share it with all of y'all. Otherwise, we're gonna be waiting a little bit longer, uh, I think end of June, for the uh, coming soon Here Comes Sunshine box set, 17 CDs from 1973. Really excited about that one um, coming soon. Still on the fence over whether I'm gonna order it, but stay tuned and, and we'll see if it ends up on this channel or not. But I definitely ordered, and this isn't, isn't coming until the end of July, the bust out show from uh, the Here Comes Sunshine box set, and that's at RFK Stadium. Uh, near the end of that run is that uh, bust out 8LP box set. It's going to be massive. That's um, on par with some of the bigger Dick's Picks uh, vinyl box sets that they've released. Really excited about that. I think that's a three-set show, so really excited about opening that one up, giving it a listen, and sharing it here. Uh, but let me know down below, did you, first of all, did you also get... Dave's Picks Volume 23, and what is your experience like? Did you have crushed corners on the uh, outer box? Did you have dirty vinyl on the inside? Is it scuffed? Is it scratched like mine? Or did you get a perfect pressing? Let me know down below what your experience is like. And that's it for today. Thank you very much for joining me. Have a good one. Peace.